And speaking of iconic coaches, we've got our own Dave Wanstead. Coach, you don't mind us putting you right in that category, right? Saban, Belichick, Pete Carroll, Dave, right? You're right there. Absolutely. Absolutely. I got the trophies in the ring, so yeah, let's do it. All right, so let's live in fantasy land for just one second. You could have Nick Saban, Bill Belichick, Pete Carroll coaching the Bears next season. They want to do nothing else with their life. One of those three, who are you picking? Oh, I'd probably go with Belichick just because I know him the best. And, uh, uh, you know, from an NFL perspective, he's probably uh, for X and O's, the situations, timeouts. He's probably as good as there is. Yeah, I mean, there is there is no wrong answer there, and Belichick would be an interesting choice. But, of course, they're staying with <clears throat> the flus. Dave, 24 hours later, as you look back on the press conference yesterday, what's, what's your biggest takeaway of the way the Bears are moving forward? Well, I'm, I'm excited that they're keeping Matt Eberflus. I mean, he deserves to be the head coach of the Bears. Uh, he not only did a great job of, in, you know, in, making the defense a lot better, making the defense a top 10 defense. Uh, but at the same time, he played the role as the head coach, defensive coordinator, and he kept the team together. I think Ryan Poles alluded to that, you know, during those tough, rocky waters, as he said. Uh, the players came out ready to play with a lot of energy every week for the most part. So I thought he did a good job of, of managing the team uh, along with dealing with the the issues that he had on defense. All right, it's interesting that you're diving into that. So that, let's actually hear Ryan Poles talking about Matt Eberflus underlining what you're saying, Coach. I really think that the head coach needs to be able to captain the ship when the seas are storm or the, when these seas have storms and really keep everything settled. Uh, when you go through hard times and he can keep everyone together, to me, that's like the critical piece. If he's jumping off the boat and everyone else starts jumping off the boat, it's a hot mess. So there he is, the captain of the ship. Look at him. I mean, that, 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 that we is. We need a new ship. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like it old school, Bears. That's Lake Michigan had a really bad day, but the Flus is going to, he's, he's going to get you docked. All right, so he's talking yesterday, Matt Eberflus, and he's listing off stats. In the last eight games, and he had all the stats, we got to the quarterback better. We, Justin didn't throw as many interceptions. We were great against the run. He basically threw out the first half of the year. Is that fair? Is he allowed to do that, Coach? Yeah, that, that's what surprised me about getting rid of all the offensive coaches is that, you know, everybody underestimated what Justin could do, in my opinion, as far as where we were at as an offense early in the year. And we had some injuries on offense, on defense, and we went in there and we tried to take the offense to the next level and it didn't work. We weren't ready for it. And then Justin gets hurt for four games. So really Justin Fields played. I think the offensive coaches figured out, okay, he's back healthy. Here's what gives us the best chance to win. And I thought you saw that type of progress that he's talking about the last half of the season. Unfortunately, it was, uh, it was too late, but, uh, there was a lot of different variables, I think, in the beginning of the season, and um, I just hated to see the offensive coaches take the brunt of it. Now, unless they're got big plans, and and maybe they were, Flus was being good to these guys, knowing that hey, we're going to take quarterback, and uh, we want to change offensive philosophies, you know, so we're going to change it over. We want to give you guys a chance to get out there now and get a job. That that could have been the reason. I don't know. All right, well, here, let's flip over to the quarterback side. And, and this was Ryan Poles talking about Justin versus drafting a quarterback, a.k.a. Caleb. Uh, pretty interesting on what exactly Poles is underlining that he's looking for. There's a lot of it. There's, you know, the player aspect in terms of the human being and the leadership and uh, their maturity, and that's the human part. And then there's the tape. And we'll go through the tape and we'll look at, you know, processing and accuracy and all of those things to make sure they're on point to feel the best. Uh, there are situations where you go to and you develop um, and you may uh, overcome some of the shortcomings that you had in college. Um, there's situations where it's the, you know, the group around you that elevates you. Um, and the other thing, too, is like I would also, you know, have a little card that like you got the sample size to be blown away, like in the NFL, like you got to stack year after year after year. So um, 
historically we'll look at those quarterbacks that have been able to be productive for a long period of time and kind of mirror that and compare that to some of the guys in the draft. So my biggest takeaway from this coach, and we've been here for a while, he's got to sit down with Caleb, and Caleb's got to pass that test, and everyone they're going to talk to about him as a guy, he's got to pass that too. And if that happens, it seems like they might be going that way. But this is a huge test. It does, doesn't it seem to you that, that Caleb's still got to cross over before the Bears can get comfortable here? When I say the word character, I'm not referring to are you a bad guy or not a bad guy. And when I say character, I'm talking about football character. Coming in early, staying late, uh, being a team guy, uh, you know, being the face of the franchise and being able to face the media and deal with everything there. So those are the things that Ryan Poles has to face. I mean, it, it, let's, let's be real. The kid's got tape that is off the chart. The kids put up numbers that are off the chart. Uh, he's an athlete, you know, 90 touchdowns in the last two years, 90 plus. You know, you do see a lot of Patrick Mahomes from the sidearm throws and the spinning around. He doesn't have the strength and the size and the speed. I don't think that, that Justin has, but he's every bit as athletic and shifty. So he's a different type of athlete. But, um, you know, and it, what happens now, because I'm involved in it when I get out of Florida, these agents ask me to kind of participate and help them prep their kids for the uh, the combine and the interviews with head coaches and interviews with general managers and on the chalkboard with coaches watching tape. And, you know, so you're talking to these kids in there about their best draw up your best defense. Nope. You got to make the circle bigger. Don't, you know, you, you got to be confident up there. So, if I'm talking to them about the football, then they go and they meet, you know, about people how to speak and how to present themselves. This it's gotten so sophisticated nowadays in a preparation standpoint that unless the guy just doesn't care or the guy, you know, doesn't have much sense, the guy is only going to help his value, increase his value between now until draft day. So I would expect Caleb Williams, Drake May, all these quarterbacks to do nothing but help themselves as far as their uh, their perception by all the NFL teams. So you know the behind the scenes better than anyone here, Dave. Do, do you think there's any scenario where people start to get a Caleb and say, hey, don't go to Chicago, quarterbacks fail there, you don't want to play in that weather, you don't want to be anywhere close to Soldier Field because for whatever reason it doesn't work there? Uh well, I would be disappointed. I really would be. I mean, it's, you know, the, arguably the greatest sports town in the in the country. We know that. Uh, but somebody will probably say that, you know. I mean, it, it, and, and maybe that's why the new offensive coordinator thought, you know, now you take whoever he is and he goes and sits down with them and he draws up all these exciting plays and everything that you're going to do where – I think if you have Luke and the guys from last year, you know, that you're, what you do and what you did for Justin, that's what you got on tape. So that's what the kid will be seeing. And, you know, maybe they're trying to make a, a bigger impression that, hey, we can use your talents in this flashy way. I don't know. But it, that, would be, uh, that would be a possibility. All right, lastly here, I want to play Kevin Warren. I don't know, Coach. I think we could have a new stadium somewhere in beautiful downtown Chicago. There, here's the Bears president and CEO. I, I strongly believe Chicago is the finest city in all of the world. I mean, very rarely you do, do you get an opportunity to have such a beautiful downtown with a vibrant business community, with an absolutely beautiful lake and the energy that, that goes along. And so I, I always focus on, you know, what's a way that we could, you know, bring together the beauty of the lake, the beauty of downtown, the business community, all the art exhibits uh, to bring that together for an environment. Because it's always about the fans. How, how can we create an environment that they really enjoy? And not only on our game days, but also from art, from food, um, um, just from music. And, uh, I, I, you know, I live downtown. I love the city. And I just think we're, we're blessed to be able to live in a city like Chicago. And so it has many pluses. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm just a big proponent of the Chicagoland area. I'm a big proponent of Arlington Heights. But there's something that's really special about uh, downtown Chicago. I mean, art, food, music. 
the lake, bears, whole complex. You don't want to go out to Arlington Heights, do you, Coach? You're, you're happy to you, – you, you like the way this is tre maybe trending, possibly? I love Kevin's at, uh, attitude, but he better get to work on it then if it's going to happen because I – my six years at the Bears and probably for 16 years before that, it took them before they could get anything done to just make an improvement on Soldier Field where it stands now. So if you think you're going to find a piece of property and make it happen uh, relatively quick, I don't know. I got my doubts right there. But, uh, you know, they need a new stadium at the end of the day. And, and what Kevin said, I mean, that would be fantasy land if he had a – brand new stadium down here but half the property down here is is protected by being historical you can't move even soldier field someone mentioned oh put them in the park in the south parking lot you can't do that that's historic property i mean you, you try try tearing something down in this city uh that's uh it, 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 it's not it, 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 there's not as many sites as what everybody would think there are that you could use to build the stadium the parking with it, you want to have the NFL experience, stuff that fans can come down and enjoy it, the museums, everything that goes with it. Uh, you need a lot of land, a lot of land, and I, I just don't know where it is. It may be here somewhere I'm not aware of, but I live downtown here too, so I don't know. I've seen you walk in the streets, Dave. I, I love to see you walk the streets right into the state. Backroom deals happen. I'm so would I. Yes, exactly. There it is. There it is. So, and all of us who live in the city and just like to come to the city. Come on. More importantly, Dave, always appreciate talking to you. Thanks for being here. Hey, Mark.